What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Bobby Harding, First Presbyterian Church, Murfreesboro. This is your Saturday sermon preview for worship on Sunday, November 26, 2013. Coming to you live from Destin, Florida. Here's Lexi. Jovi's back there buried. It's 2023. What'd I say? 2013. Wow. What can I say? I'm in beach time. <laughs> we are spending Thanksgiving break here at the beach. And today's actually Thursday the 24th. Friday. 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 My goodness. I'm in a time warp. I'm so relaxed and free. I don't know wh when it is. I'm sitting here. I have my coffee still. I believe it's still in the AM hours. Um, David James Duncan's new book, Sun House. Possibly one of the greatest authors to have ever been born. Enjoying that. Uh, so here's the sermon preview for this coming Sunday. You remember we are looking at Matthew 25, this uh, series of sermons on the three, uh, these three separate teachings Jesus gives in Matthew 25. Um, John keeps saying that they're three parables. And to be fair, he might be right. The first two are definitely parables. The, the 10 virgins or the 10 young bridesmaids is a parable. And then the parable of the talents. Um, but then this third one that we're going to look at uh, on Sunday, some scholars say it's a parable. Some say it's not really a parable. It definitely doesn't sound like a parable like most of Jesus' parables do. We'll talk a little bit, of, a little bit about that. Bottom line, though, I'm not sure if it matters if it's a parable or not. I don't think we need to waste a lot of time arguing about that. Um, there is truth in it. Um, and where we talk about how parables kind of give meaning to our lives and to our faith, uh, it's, that would also be true for this teaching, the sheep and the goats. But there's also something else in there um, that I feel like makes it not exactly a parable uh, the way Jesus' other parables feel anyway. Um, check it out if you haven't yet. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. And I would, that a, a level one prep for this would be, read that. Read those verses before worship on Sunday so you're familiar with them. Level two prep would be, read reread all of Matthew 25 so you get some context and lead up to, um, in, to, the, to the one we're looking at. Level three would be to back it up I would say at least all of Matthew 24 and then into 25. Because there's a lot of stuff that's going on that, that lead up to this that make it, the context is helpful. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the sermon, but it helps frame what Jesus is trying to teach uh, his disciples. Remember, it's a small, he's talking, he's not on a hillside telling hundreds and thousands of people these stories. It's just him and his disciples. Um, and he's, this is sort of his last ditch effort to teach them some things before everything starts to um, happen, leading to his arrest and crucifixion and so forth. Um, it is some end times stuff. Uh, we've been throwing around the word eschatology, which is a word seminary students love. Um, and this, is, this would be considered an eschatological discourse that Jesus is into. Uh, and this sheep and goats teaching is kind of the conclusion of it. So we're going to talk about all that fun stuff and how disruptive this teaching is and how much it should bother us. Um, we're also going to talk about something that nobody likes uh, and that is judgment. Jesus talked a lot about judgment. Matthew loved to write about judgment at the end, but it's not a subject we, especially Presbyterians, like to dwell on much, uh, but it's part of the story. And so we're going to talk about that. Um, and then dig into this really cool story about sheep and goats and being them being separated based on some factors that a lot of people would have found surprising then. And I think even us today ought to find pretty surprising. So that's that. I think we're staying at the beach for a little bit longer. I don't know if we're leaving today. It doesn't feel like we're leaving today right now. Um, Cause we're all here and uh, Oscar's down there. Trying to surf on a boogie board, bless it. But that is all, hope to see you in worship. Uh, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. 
having a good Thanksgiving weekend. Grace and peace. We will see you on Sunday.